looks good, but it could be better with a lift on it. Yeah, let's lift this XJ. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. Today we're going to be lifting this Jeep Cherokee XJ. We're going to go for about three inches and we're going to put on 31 inch tires. So uh, really excited. Uh, why would you want to lift an XJ? Let me answer that question by asking you another one. Why wouldn't you want to lift an XJ? Lifted XJs are awesome. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take some measurements, show you the wheels we're gonna put on this thing, and we're gonna get started. All right, guys, here we go. 2001 Jeep Cherokee XJ, completely factory. It's about two and a half inches of space between the fender and the wheel. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to put on these bad boys. I can't wait to get these on. And as you can see, we got some lifting to do. This is a little higher, about two and five eighths inches. Let's take a look at this leaf spring. It's really bad under here. Here's a good look at our factory leaf spring. It is 21 years old. We have negative lift. It is bowing down so much. It's a, it's a bent right here. It's a bent. Um, so this is not good actually. This isn't good either. We got some rust, but we'll address the rust in other videos. But yeah, we have got to get these leaf springs out of here. And if you're gonna replace a leaf spring, why not just lift the vehicle? We jack this thing up super high. I got huge Duralast six ton jack stands over there, supported with some wood block and wood under there so we don't further damage my driveway. This baby's just dangling now. And uh, we still got about a fist worth of room to spare. Don't forget to apply your parking brake and block the wheels. So this thing is up, I want to give it a little wiggle, because we'll be wiggling all right. Make sure this baby is safe to work on. You do not want to eat an XJ. It's going to be a bad day if that happens. Oh, it looks droopy. All right, oh, I got my lug nuts in here, keeping them safe. Pop up this hood. All right, 15 millimeter impact and an extension. Passenger shock bolt, pretty straightforward. I mean, yours doesn't have to be 15, could be 13, could be half inch, but that comes off easily. Driver side 15 millimeter is a little different because we got our uh, we got our brake system all up in here, blocking us, but you can work around it. If you have ABS like Black Beauty does, I apologize in advance, guys. There is no easy way to do this. Just gonna have to get up in there, take the air box off. But thankfully, Resurrect J doesn't have that problem. All right, we got both upper shock bolts off. That's nice and loose. Let our jack down just a little bit. Now we can get these sway bar bushing bolts. This one also is 15 millimeter. Much more room. All right, gotta lower the driver's side. It's always good to have these things jacked up. You never wanna take off a bolt and have something fall down on you. It's uh, startling and it could be dangerous. There we go, nice and free. Got a 13 millimeter deep dish, 13 millimeter wrench. Just gonna take off this shock bolt, this lower shock mount right down here. All right guys, and as you can see, things are pretty crusty under a Jeep. So before you do this, you're gonna wanna soak all the bolts you're about to see in this video, soak them all in your favorite penetrating oil. All right, now we're gonna take out the spring retainer. It's 13 millimeter also. Crank that loose. And let the snap on do the rest of the work. Take this out, save it for later. And at this point, we don't need a spring compressor. We could probably just use some leverage and some muscular force. Just get this sucker out of here. Uh, 
There we go. Oh, take a look at this. That is uh, a pretty sad spring isolator. Oh my goodness. Look at that. <laughs> Gross. So I didn't want my calipers dangling, so I just dropped the bungee cord through the hole of the shock tower and strung up the caliper. And uh, just gonna get this out of the way. And there, I don't have to worry about any breaks in my way now. Sweet, there's the other end. Genius! <laughs> All right, this side is nice and clear. Gonna go do the same exact thing to the passenger side now. Ugh, crusty bump stops. All right, so track bar bolt. This is 15 millimeter. It's got a little flag nut back there. This should come off easy, famous last words, right, guys? I struggled with this thing. This bolt actually broke off last summer while I was messing with the suspension. Well, this thing is rusted to pieces. I just put a little bit of torque on it. Snap the head of the bolt right off. This piece came right off. So what I had left was this whole bolt shaft in the track bar bushing, still attached to the vehicle. That was really annoying. Here we go. Woo, there we go. Nice and easy with fresh Loctite, yeah. Hey, good morning, guys. So last night I dropped down this drag link off the pitman arm. I made some room so I could get the oil pan out of here. That's in my oil pan video. That will be up shortly. So I just worked this drag link, the steering bar loose. So now I'm just gonna take off the whole front end and then we're gonna pull it out, clean it and paint it. All right, the track bar mount to 18 millimeter. This comes off nice and easy. factory XJ track bar and track bar bracket is out. This one's in pretty good condition. Gonna save it. And now I'm gonna disconnect the front drive shaft at the yoke. These are usually eight millimeter. I've been soaking all of these joints for the last couple of weeks in penetrating oil. Yes. All right. Upper control arm on the pumpkin, the driver's side, it's usually covered in oil, so this shouldn't be a problem. Looks like that flag nut over here did its job. It says simple green, but it's not. It's actually BB Blast. Here we go, let's look at this baby out of the vehicle. Now, I am very, very glad we are changing control arms. These bushings are shot. Look at this, uh, gross. This isn't even the worst one. This is probably the worst one. Terrible. Look at that, that's gross. Uh, the upper bushings really aren't too bad. They're not wallowed out, pretty tight. Mine is scraping from going in and out of the cups. Both sides are pretty good. Uh, on second thought, this is a little crappy at here. 
going to clean all this up. Got to degrease it. So what I use is this industrial purple degreaser. This is some good stuff. I got this stuff in uh, Home Depot, little pump thing. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and blast this on. And it's going to get all of that stuff off. And then we'll power wash it. All nice and cleaned up, scrubbed down. Now we're gonna prepare it for some paint. Check that out, guys. This stuff did some cool work. Nice paintable surface, just as it says. All right, I'm gonna hit it with some self-etching primer. All right, one can of self-etching primer in the books. This came out nice and primed and etched all by itself, so we gotta go, go ahead and paint it now. Semi-gloss black. Found a little rot in here. Nasty rust. That ain't good. So, I'm gonna extract one off the useless other front half of Beach Jeep. There we go. We'll just get that right in there. Cut this out first, of course. Come on, man. All right, so I got the spring tower all ground down. So I'm gonna line up the hole in the middle, right there. Actually, gotta go this way. And I'm just gonna trace it out so I know where it goes. Hey, <laughs> there we go, we got our new spring tower or bump stop holder or whatever the heck this thing is called <laughs> in place welded up cleaned up ready for paint rick j is just hovering there with the axle out of the way it's a good time to do the oil pan all right guys here we go gonna put this all back together got that oil pan in there nice got everything cleaned up in the wheel wells i replaced this bump stop tower that little spring tower and here we go, here is the whole front end, nice and painted. I got the new bushings pressed on both sides. I also got my new axle seals tapped in there, ready to go. Here is all my front end parts. As you can see, everything has been freshly painted, even the new stuff, guys. These lower control arms scuffed up, painted the springs painted got my hubs all painted got my sway bar painted the only thing i didn't paint was my new track bar mount and almost forgot a new adjustable track bar all right just gonna roll this baby into place and start connecting all my parts i think i'm gonna start with the lower control arms then i'll do the upper control arms and while i'm doing this i'm not going to be tightening down any of these bolts just keeping them loose to get them in place we're going to torque those down later when this thing is sitting where it needs to be sitting i'm going to hurry because there is a big thunderstorm coming and i don't want all my nice new parts out in the rain <laughs>
Oh man, here it comes. All right, when you reinstall the old drive shaft, make sure there's a little bit of Loctite. Now, when you're reinstalling your drive shaft, you want to make sure that both ends of the U-joint are seated properly. That looks good, but look at that. That one is out. So we're going to want to tap that back in, make sure everything's in there nice and even. There we go. No! Uh, I tried to soldier on and get stuff done because I'm running out of time, but it's torrential now, so gotta cut it. I'll catch up with you guys when it's dry. All right, guys, here are all the lift components that I installed in the order in which I installed them and the corresponding torque specs and approximation. If you want to know exactly what they are, I highly recommend you look them up yourself so you guys know. But the first thing I did was I put on this Rough Country bracket for the track bar. Now, these bolts right here, they get torqued to approximately 95 foot-pounds. And these nuts up top get torqued to approximately 75 foot-pounds. Once this piece was on, I went ahead and I installed my lower control arms. Now these bolts are pretty beefy. And again, they're not torqued down yet. They're just holding everything together. And they got the same ones down here. And of course, on both sides. Now these lower control arms, they both get torqued to about 85 foot-pounds on this top one and bottom one, both frame side and axle side, uh, 85 foot-pounds. Uh, once those were on, I went ahead and I rocked the axle back up. Uh, this is the upper control arms, nice and restored. Uh, the top mounts up there in the frame, they get torqued to about 66 foot-pounds give or take, and the lower ones down here are about 55. Uh, again, both of these have not been torqued yet. They're just holding everything in place. There you go. Now we got one up there, and we also got one right over yonder. There they are. Yep, so those get torqued down as well. It's important to torque those down when the vehicle is riding on its wheels. Next part I installed were these springs. Now, of course, I went ahead and slid on this factory rubber spring isolator, brand new. And with it, I put on this urethane budget boost puck. Now, these springs, they're aftermarket. Uh, they came with my XJ back in the day. I saved them. They're cool. They got this dual rate right here is tight. Down here is a little looser. Overall, these springs give me about a one inch lift over factory. So that one inch paired with the two and a half inches of this here urethane puck gives me about a three and a half inch uh, boost up here in the front. So I got these three inches um, with the springs. Don't forget you wanna put on these bump stops before you put on the springs, obviously, so you can get to them. And of course, I painted the springs black. Don't forget to reinstall your 13 millimeter spring fasteners. I think those torque specs are about 30 foot pounds. Once the front end was back on the vehicle, I went ahead and reinstalled my axles. Uh, they get three 12.13 millimeter bolts. They go in and there, one, two, and three over yonder, right there. Uh, those get torqued down to about 75 foot-pounds. Now, it really helps to do these first because if you try to put your steering back on, uh, it's more of a pain to get to those bolts. You want to keep the steering off so you could rock these on the knuckle back and forth to torque down these bolts. So that's that. My hubs were nice and tight, so I did not need to remove the hubs. The only thing I didn't do were the hubs and the ball joints. Those seemed pretty tight. Oh, I didn't do the U-joints either. Um, those are pretty tight also. There's a good shot at my nice new greasable axle seals. Next thing I did was install this new Rough Country adjustable track bar. I have experimented with quite a few track bars, but this one by far is my favorite. 
you could adjust it one time on the vehicle with this collar right here you could rock it in and out depending on where you want the axle to sit on the vehicle uh, to install it instead of hooking up ratchet straps and pulling the vehicle over which I never really care for uh, doing that it's always dangerous when you're on jack stands I just threaded this thing all the way out lined it right up tapped it right in there got the bolt in um, as you can see I cut out a little bit more of this bracket so I could fit this new 17 millimeter nut on that came with this kit once the vehicle is on the ground I'm gonna center the axle under the vehicle by rotating this bar up or down and then I'm gonna go ahead and move these clamps right over the threads where are they <laughs> one over here one over here on the inside of the threads and tighten these down to about 30 foot pounds then I went ahead and I reattached my steering bars. We got this tie rod down here, going up to the drag link right over here. That goes into your pitman arm. All these factory ball joints get torqued to about 55 foot pounds right there on the castle nuts. Don't forget to reinstall your cotter pins, like so. Again, I uh, cleaned these all up, painted all these parts, trying to prevent rust, make it look much better. Now, this part of the drag link, I also broke free, cleaned it up, was able to move this adjustment piece also. This is what you're going to need to do to readjust your steering wheel. You're going to loosen these up and then spin this just like that track bar to get your steering wheel to uh, turn around and line up back to 12 o'clock position. Everything's all out of whack once you lift it. Uh, also, to readjust your alignment, you're going to have to loosen this right here, this one and this one and then you could turn this whole tie rod to adjust your wheels in or out we'll uh, get to that later on the next thing I installed was the steering stabilizer first thing you're gonna want to do is pop this nut on you can see it uh, again I didn't tighten anything down yet and then you go ahead and pop this one on I do believe the steering stabilizer gets torqued down, I think, 40 foot-pounds for both top and bottom. Then I went ahead and reinstalled my sway bar with new bushings. Don't mind all the anti seize <laughs> but again, everything freshly painted. And these 15 millimeter sway bar bolts, I cranked them down to about 60 foot-pounds. Um, they're not going anywhere. They're nice and in the frame, nice and anti seize Sway bar is nice and tight. After the sway bar is on, you can go ahead and install the sway bar end links. These are Rough Country extended sway bar end links for three inches of lift. Uh, you go ahead and slide these on the bottom. You don't have to tighten them down yet. Uh, keep it wiggly. It'll help you attach these suckers onto this bracket. You got to pre-install this bracket. You pop the screw up uh, from the bottom up. Go ahead and crank this sucker down. I don't have torque specs. I just made it as tight as I could. And then uh, you gotta go line up this hole in here, put the bolt in. Um, you're gonna have to jack this up to manipulate the height and get it where you wanted, and you can pin it through. Uh, I don't have torque specs for this either, but I cranked this sucker down probably about 60. I'll do 60 top and bottom. The beefier the bolt is, whoop, the more torque you're gonna need. So these are pretty thick bolts, so I cranked them down. And uh, the last thing I did was reinstall or install these new Rough Country shocks. I just cranked these down to about 30 foot-pounds down here, uh, nice and tight. And again, you want to go ahead and reinstall new bushings. And you can come up here, and I couldn't torque these down because I uh, can't fit a torque wrench in there. But I went ahead and made sure they felt <laughs> to be about 30 foot pounds as well all right guys so you know what i think this video is probably long enough that's going to wrap up the uh, front suspension so i'm going to call this video here on this front suspension uh, what i'm going to go ahead and do now is install these new calipers that i cleaned up and rebuilt um, i'm going to probably bleed the brakes i got to put oil in this thing because i did an oil pan too so uh yeah i'm going to close out this video with the end of the front suspension stay tuned to uh the channel for the rear suspension lift video so i'll do front rear and then i might do a, a recap they're supposed to retorque everything after 500 miles so maybe i'll do an after lift video 
checking the torque, making sure you're steering straight and you get that alignment. So, um, oh, look at that. Hey, I almost forgot. Got these new dust shields for the uh, backing plates. Look at that. I'll throw a link in the description for all these cool products I used and uh, paint and stuff like that to make your stuff uh, new and fresh and looking good. Uh, did a lot of luff, luff. I did a lot of rough country parts. So uh, yeah, well, that's it. Um, all right, since I'm closing this one out here, like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next project when we lift the rear of this thing. All right, guys, peace.